Let's look at how we would apply debits and credits for assets, liabilities, and owner's equities. So use whichever memory tool you prefer, a Lonray or a loaner. I'm going to use a Lonray here, and we're going to learn the rules just for assets, liabilities, and owner's equities. So assets will be debits, liabilities will be credits, and owner's equity will be credits. And the reason for that is assets must always equal liabilities plus owner's equity. So that's why these two here should equal that one. And all we're going to do once we remember the rules is then go and apply them to each transaction. And before we put them in ledgers, we're going to learn with these transaction tools, which are really, really helpful. And they tell us what to do and when. So if you're really having trouble with like why something's a debit, you never actually really need to know that in the real world. Like, you know, you ask a hundred accountants why an asset goes up on the debit side. Um, yeah, I don't know, honestly, how many could answer that? I guess because it doesn't go up on the credit side is the answer, which is stupid, right? But the point is, it does go up on the debit side. And that's all you need to remember. And why doesn't a liability go down on the, who cares? All you need to remember is it goes up on the credit side, for example. So let's do that one thing at a time. So the owner contributed $25,000 to commence the business. So the business is gonna have a new asset called cash, or you might call it bank, cash or bank, whatever. That's an asset. And from the business's perspective, that asset is gonna go up. And the rule says here now, is that gonna be a debit or a credit? Well, don't worry about the whys, just go, well, what's my rule say? It says when an asset goes up, that should be a debit. However, every debit needs a credit. So our rules of double entry said we've got to have at least two accounts affected. So that's at least two, can be up to five. And for every debit, we need a credit of an equal amount. The debits need to equal the credits. And at the moment, we don't have that. So what we need to do here is go, well, when you give the business money as the owner, that's called capital. That's an owner's equity account. And it's also going up. And the rule here says when owner's equity goes up, that's a credit. So now I've got a debit matched with a credit. Okay, let's take another transaction. The business took out a loan for $10,000. The business, from its perspective, has more cash. Cash is an asset that's going up. So what does the rule say? The rule says when an asset goes up, that's a debit of $10,000. However, when you get that, um, you get something called a loan. And a loan is a liability. And that loan or liability is going up. And the rule says here that should be a credit. Now, just a, a note here. I always do the debits first before the credits, and that'll be the same in every video for the rest of the year. It totally doesn't matter. You can do them in whatever order you want. So I just learned that way when I studied it, and that's just why I teach it that way. But you can learn in whatever order you want. As long as we get the, the right debits and credits, the order is completely irrelevant. Transaction number three, purchased a computer for cash for $3,000. So the business has a new computer. That's an asset. That asset is increasing, and the rule says that should be a debit. What else happened though? Well, we had to give up some cash. Cash is an asset, it's decreasing, and the rule says uh, that should be a credit. Now what we've got here is one asset going up, one asset going down, that's okay. That doesn't have to be like, we always have to have one asset and one liability going up and down at the same time. As long as our debits equal our credits, then we're all good. Transaction number four. We took out that loan, now I'm gonna pay it back. So the first thing that happens is I've got a loan, that's a liability. Now I'm paying back some of that loan. So the amount of that liability is actually going to decrease. And the rule says when a liability decreases, that should be a debit. What else happens? Well, I've got an account called cash. So how did I pay the loan? I had to give up some cash. That's an asset. So I had to pay money. So that decreases my asset. And the rule here says when an asset decreases, that should be a credit. Transaction number five, bought stock or inventory, same thing. For $600 cash. I now have an asset called stock or inventory. We'll call it inventory for the rest of the year. We'll just call it stock here. That's an asset. I now have more of it. So it's increasing. And my rule says that should be a debit here. What else happens though? Every debit needs a credit. So in this case, I had to give up cash. So cash is an asset. And because I had to give it up, that's decreasing. And the rule says that would be a credit. One debit, one credit. One more for now, the owner contributed $800 to the business. So from the business's perspective, it's got more cash. Cash is an asset, it's increasing, so that means that's a debit. When you give the business um, capital, so that's a ledger called capital, owner's equity, uh, that's increasing, and the rule says that should be a credit.
So that's just six example transactions. There are hundreds of different transactions that we're going to have to do this for. And really, we just got to learn them. We kind of know all the rules now. All we ever got to do is apply them. So we just learn when we take a new topic, we just come back to our same fundamentals. What are the rules of debits and credits? And just take it one step at a time and always go, what is the account? How would I classify it? What type of account is it? Is it going up or down? And then your rules and debits and credits will guide you on exactly what to do. So that's the rules for assets, liabilities, and owner's equities. In the next video, we'll look at the rule for negative owner's equities, which is what we call drawings.